So, I like collecting amiibo. In fact, I own 338 because they're, uh, they're, they're neat to look at. I don't know, I don't have any deep thought-provoking reason. Now, you're probably wondering how it's even possible to own this many. Has Nintendo actually made hundreds of these things over the past several years? Well, let's start with Red Luigi. How many Mario amiibo do you think there are? I'll give you a second to guess, because, uh, it's more than you think. We've got the basic Mario series Mario, Silver Mario, Gold Mario, Smash Bros. Mario, Dr. Mario, Wedding Mario, Cat Mario, 30th Anniversary Classic Colors, 30th Anniversary Modern Colors, Mario Power Up Band, Mario Soccer, Mario Baseball, Mario Tennis, Mario Golf, Mario Horse Racing, maybe Mario Soccer, maybe Mario Baseball, maybe Mario Tennis, maybe Mario Golf, maybe Mario Horse Racing, and Mario Cereal. That is 21 different Mario Amiibo. And there's even rumors of a Bronze Amiibo coming out sometime, and I wouldn't be surprised to see even more in the future. Out of all these Amiibo, one of them has the highest compatibility, 40 games, in fact. Now, there's no way anybody here is gonna know this, so I'll just tell you, it's Wedding Mario. Gold Mario has 39 compatible games, so what's the extra game that Wedding Mario has? I, uh, honestly couldn't tell you. I looked through both lists of each amiibo, and they all seem to have the same games, so I guess Wedding Mario can be used for certain games in more ways besides just one, while Gold Mario isn't as diverse. Who knows, the website could just be wrong as well, I have no idea. But anyway, there's a massive amount of amiibo here, so spare me a moment and just let me tell you about all the cool shit they have. This is the largest series of Amiibo, assuming we're not including Amiibo cards with a total of 94 figures. That number may not sound correct seeing as there's only 89 fighters if you include all the DLC and split up characters like Pokemon Trainer and Pyra slash Mithra. This number is higher because some characters have multiple Amiibo. Most people know about the Cloud, Corn, and Bayonetta doubles. They each have two Amiibo with different costumes. Cloud is a costume based on his appearance from Dissidia Final Fantasy as well as Final Fantasy VII. Bayonetta's Amiibo has costumes from Bayonetta 1 and two. Corrin is the most interesting because we have a male and female version. It makes me wonder why we didn't get additional amiibo for Villager, We Fit Trainer, Inkling, Violet, and Pokemon Trainer, seeing as they have female and male costumes too. Speaking of Pokemon Trainer, he has four freaking amiibo. There's the Trainer himself, plus Charizard, which came out in the Smash 4 days, and Ivysaur and Squirtle later on. I can understand why all the Pokemon got them, but the Trainer himself is an interesting choice. The last oddball is of course Rob, as there are two different versions of him. One based on NES colors and the other Famicom colors. As of right now, not all the amiibo are out yet, but we know that we're getting Steve and Alex, so that's basically two Steve amiibo, and Pyra and Mithra are also going to be separated, so that's another two. But strangely, Sora is never shown or discussed. I guess that means he's not getting an amiibo? Why would they delay his announcement? I mean, I hope that's not the case, considering every other character has them. If Disney is really this stingy about Nintendo selling Sora merchandise, that is insane insanely obnoxious. Or maybe he's just coming out later, I don't know yet. Now, what's the rarest amiibo out of this entire series? Keep in mind that prices are fluctuating all the time, but the three rarest amiibo at this time are Corrin Player 2, the Mii 3 Pack, and Mii Brawler. Corrin Player 2 is sitting at around $159 new, and was sold exclusively with Amazon in the US. So I'm assuming the exclusivity, as well as her barefoot waifu status, has made her more valuable. The Mii's are really interesting. The 3 Pack was exclusive to Toys R Us, and it's worth about $113 new, but the Mi Brawler individually is about the same price new. He was only sold as a solo in Japan, so his box costs an extra $50 if you really want the cardboard that badly. Lucy goes for around $60, bucks, which honestly is still quite a bit. But if we want to talk about super rare amiibo, there's a few infamous defective ones that go for massive prices. We've got No Left Hand Luigi, which is just Luigi missing his left hand. Apparently this one was sold for $500, and that's actually low for what's coming up. Next, we've got Dual Cannon Samus, which honestly is incredibly cool, and I'd be down to see Nintendo make official ones for this. The seller found this amiibo at Best Buy, and then resold it for $2,500. That probably sounds insane, but finally, there's Legless Peach. There's apparently a few of these still in circulation, and this one sold for $25,100. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of have a hard time believing that. When checking eBay to see if any of these defective amiibo were still up, I found found someone trying to sell Legless Peach for $200,000. I don't know what this guy thinks he's doing. Is he trying to manipulate the entire market? Is he actually crazy? Who knows?
These are the most generic amiibo you can find, outside of a few exceptions. Nintendo has really gone crazy with selling Mario over and over, considering his normal pose has silver and gold variations. The Boo amiibo is really cool because he glows in the dark, and I believe is the only amiibo that can do that. Then you've got all these wedding ones from Mario Odyssey. All of them will give you costumes in that game, but the Bowser one can also reveal regional coin locations. I'm not sure why he, of all characters, does that, but it's still neat. The last one worth bringing up is Cat Mario and Cat Peach. They're both well detailed, but they also give you access to the invincibility bell. It's about as broken as it sounds, and the only way to get this power up is with these amiibo, which is pretty lame. With this series, the only spendy set is the Mario Odyssey Wedding 3 pack. In box, it goes for around 125 bucks, which I believe is because the 3 pack isn't as common as the separate boxes. Packs of games or packs of figures like this generally have less copies printed, so that's why they're worth more and why it makes sense. To wrap up the Mario stuff, we've got the 30th anniversary figures. Mario's got a classic color and modern color version. Similar to Cat Mario, these unlock an exclusive power-up in Super Mario Maker called the Big Mushroom. This mushroom would obviously make you super big, but you could also run through blocks, slaps a CRT filter on the screen, and even changes how the enemies look. Even though this is locked content, at least you're getting a lot out of it. Finally, there's the Mario cereal. And no, I haven't eaten the cereal itself. It will forever remain in this sealed box because it expired a long time ago. The cereal basically lets you see a location of a power moon, and the game even calls it a delicious amiibo. Also, this cereal amiibo doesn't work with any other game. It's just Mario Odyssey. I've also got a few custom Mario amiibo. This is a pink gold peach one that was given to me by Chari5 way back in the day, and yes, it is very blurst, I know. Next is this epic Mario 64 amiibo made by Nintendrew. We did some sort of trade a few years ago, and it's one of the coolest custom amiibo I've ever seen. Lastly, I have this tiny Mario cereal amiibo, and I only bought it because I was salty that I forgot to buy the cereal when it was in stores. Splatoon has had quite the run for Amiibo as well. Everything at one point was sold in packs. There's two different three packs for Splatoon 1, a three pack for Splatoon 2, another three pack for the Octo Expansion, and then dual packs for both games Squid Sisters. These Amiibo were a little controversial as they locked challenge mode stages behind the Amiibo paywall, at least in Splatoon 1. Splatoon 2 had a better idea with their Amiibo. Instead, you would get some gear, save your favorite weapons, gear, and controls, plus you can take photos with your character. The rarest Amiibo in this series are the Octolink three pack pack in the Cali slash Marie 2 pack. Once again, they are packs, so they're going to be worth more as not as many are printed. The Octoling pack goes for around $154 new, and Cali slash Marie $121. Cali and Marie were only sold as a 2 pack in the US, and same for Octoling's 3 pack. Individual figures were only sold in Japan. This is one of the most segmented series of Amiibo. There's a ton of different versions of Link available. 8-Bit Link, Ocarina of Time Link, Toon Link, Wolf Link, Archer Link, Rider Link, Majora's Mask Link, Twilight Princess Link, Skyward Sword Link, and my favorite, Link's Awakening Link. He's such a small and wholesome boy, I love him. Wolf Link is one of the many Amiibo that are exclusively bundled with a game, this one being Twilight Princess HD. With Twilight Princess, you can unlock the Cave of Shadows. And speaking of that game, it's kind of cool how the Ganondorf Amiibo Amiibo has you take twice as much damage from enemies and the environment, Zelda and Loftwing also let you quickly travel between the surface and the sky in Skyward Sword HD, which some people aren't too fond of. Locking a quality of life improvement behind an Amiibo is honestly pretty dumb. As you could probably guess, the Champions 4-pack is the most expensive out of all of these, clocking in at around 121 bucks brand new. The Wind Waker 2-pack sits at $91, and Twilight Princess Link is surprisingly $76. That's likely because he was an Amazon on exclusive, and who knows how many were printed. There's not a lot of these ones, but the Metroid is definitely my favorite because of its material. You can actually squish the green body. It's just so neat and different. I'm a huge fan of stuff like this. And I'm not the only one that thinks that considering the Metroid 2-pack goes for 198 bucks brand new. Everybody wants that squishy fella, I guess.
As massive as Pokemon is, there's actually only two dedicated amiibo, and one of them is a card. I'm not counting the Smash Bros. ones, of course, but yeah, there's the Shadow Mewtwo card and Detective Pikachu. The card comes with Pokemon Tournament on the Wii U, and it only works with this game. It's just an easier way to unlock Shadow Mewtwo, and I'm not gonna lie, I can see this card going up in value a lot over the next 5-10 to 10 years. Detective Pikachu is also interesting because of how freaking large he is. He doesn't really do much either, outside of accessing all the cutscenes up until the current chapter you're on. And he also works with Smash Bros. Ultimate, otherwise that's about it. This is another one that'll likely be worth a lot in the future. I mean, he's already sitting at 50 bucks brand new. By far, my favorite amiibo. Nintendo decided to make a bunch of cute yarn plushies for this game. I can't even name a favorite. They're literally all adorable and awesome. Mega Yarn Yoshi is the largest amiibo if you don't count the cereal box, and this was also exclusive to Toys R Us. So you know he's gonna be worth a lot. Brand new, he's sitting at 181 bucks, and I'm surprised it's not more. Poochie is sitting at 110 bucks. He's another one that isn't very common. So has any of you ever played Box Boy? Yeah, you might remember seeing this little square guy in Nintendo Directs and just saying to yourself, well that looks neat, and then wiping the game from your memory. Well, guess what? He's got an amiibo, and it is the most expensive figure out there, sitting at $326 brand spanking new. We've also got this slick Chibi Robo figure, sitting in a patch of grass or something like that. In his game on the 3DS, you can use Super Chibi Robo for an entire level. He's basically just gold and has a longer wire, so that's kind of interesting. Thing. There's also a lot of really surprising characters turned into amiibo, one of those being Solera Vastora from Dark Souls. He doesn't do much besides unlock the Praise the Sun gesture in Dark Souls Remastered, which you can already do in-game, but at least he stands out amongst all the other Nintendo stuff. And it gets even weirder. This is Loot Goblin from Diablo 3. I don't know anything about this game, but he's able to summon a portal called Golden Greed's Domain at any point in the game, and you can get a bunch of money from it. So it sounds like it's useful, but maybe it isn't. I don't know, I haven't played the game, I just like the design of this guy. Four Fire Emblem amiibo also exist. All of them work with Smash Bros. Ultimate, as well as the Fire Emblem games on the 3DS and Switch. Interestingly, Krom doesn't unlock a spirit, but is used as a normal Smash Bros. fighter. So way before the Smash Bros. Krom came out, you could use this if you really wanted to. The Fire Emblem 2-pack is also pretty pricey, sitting at around 101 bucks, and Celica alone is 97, so it's actually a better value to get the 2-pack since she's in that one. Kirby also also has a small set too, but there's honestly not much to say about them. None of them have super unique abilities for games, and none of them are that expensive. Mega Man has a couple of amiibo outside of the Smash Bros. one. This version was for Mega Man 11. I like this one a lot more. He has a more intense pose and expressive face. He was sold only through GameStop, and bundled with the Switch version of Mega Man 11. He doesn't do anything remarkable. He just gives you some E-Tanks and other useful in-game items. What is interesting is his usage in the Mega Man Legacy collections. In the first collection, you unlock 11 exclusive challenge stages that were designed by fans. I had no idea this was a thing until recently, so I'll definitely be trying these stages out as a big fan of Mega Man myself. And the same for the second Legacy Collection, so that's a really neat feature. The gold Mega Man amiibo has the same pose as the Smash Bros. one, and it was also sold in a bundle, this time with Mega Man Legacy Collection on the 3DS. They're both worth a lot as you'd expect. The gold Mega Man sits at around 101 bucks, and Mega Man 11 version at 70. That's not even the rarest Mega Man amiibo. There's a gold version of the Mega Man 11 variant which only has 10 printed copies. These were apparently given out via a raffle contest as a grand prize in Japan. None of them have showed up in the market yet, so who knows if this is even real. Pikmin has one amiibo, and it's a fairly intricate design with a bunch of Pikmin hanging out near a big boulder. This one isn't worth a lot and doesn't do much either. In Hey Pikmin, you can call backup Pikmin, but that's about it that's worth mentioning. Shovel Knight surprisingly has five amiibo, which is kind of weird because I feel like people don't really talk about this game anymore. Not to downplay it, because he's still a great character and all, it's just strange there's so much for this series. They really don't do a whole lot either. You can unlock some special skins and challenge stages for the Switch version.
Monster Hunter is wild and out here. In general, these amiibo are massive. They're scaled bigger than most amiibo because I guess Japan likes their dragons bigger. I'm not sure. Since half of these are Japan only, a lot of them cost a pretty penny. Especially Leolia and Cheval. They're sitting at a massive $400 brand new. I don't have all of these amiibo because of the price, but I've got a couple of the riders. And believe it or not, the riders are interchangeable, meaning you're able to swap them from monster to monster. Navuro is also up there in price at $350 new, although he doesn't have that unique interchangeable property. I'm assuming the high price is just because cat, and you know, cats are cool. I do have all the Monster Hunter Rise amiibo because they launch worldwide, so they were a lot easier to snag. And if you thought those were spendy, then imagine how much the gold and silver riders are worth. There's only one figure of each of these, and they were special prizes for the top two winners of a tournament for Monster Hunter Stories. So it's likely we will never see these sold, or really seen again. Now we're getting into the weird stuff. Here we've got a fun little hybrid. These are Skylanders figures, but also Amiibo figures. By twisting the base, you can go between Skylanders and Amiibo, which is pretty nifty, honestly. DK and Bowser have normal and dark versions. I'm just missing Dark Bowser because he costs a good amount. The dark figures tend to sit at around 70 to 80 bucks every time I check online, which is more than I like to spend on these. Thanks to current world events, I couldn't go to Japan to experience Super Nintendo World when it launched. So I brought some of that to me instead and ordered all six of the power-up bands. These things came in some very nice carrying cases as well. For some reason, you can only use these power-up bands on Switch games. They won't work on your 3DS or Wii U. But yeah, you can use your wrist to get a power-up in Mario 3D World if you're really feeling like it. I love how the bands are also drawn to represent each character's clothing, like Mario's overalls or Daisy's dress. They've got a very clean aesthetic to them. I don't have much to say about the Animal Crossing figures. You've probably seen them rotting away in your local Best Buy or Target for the past 50 years. I'm assuming they aren't worth a lot because their initial use was for Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Yeah, big yikes. But we haven't even touched Animal Crossing Amiibo. You think 16 is a lot? Well, let me introduce you to the world of Animal Crossing cards. These are the Animal Crossing cards I have, a teeny tiny fraction of what's out there. They come from Booster Pack Series 1 through 4, and there's now five different series. Series 1 through 4 have 100 cards each. Yes, 400 Animal Crossing cards, and Series 5 has 48 cards, but it's still a new deck, so there's a chance that not all the cards have been documented yet. Gotta be honest, I don't understand why this massive amount of cards exist. It's not like they're playing cards where you can have some epic Yu-Gi-Oh! duel or something, which ironically enough is foreshadowing, but anyway, these cards can be used to scan into New Horizons to invite characters to your island. That seems to be their only real purpose, at least in my opinion, which granted isn't bad, but goddamn, that is a lot of cards. And this is just one type of Animal Crossing card. There's also Animal Crossing New Leaf Welcome Amiibo cards, which were made for New Leaf on the 3DS. These also function the same in New Horizons, which is pretty handy, but there's also 50 of these cards. I just have one to show you. There's also five Animal Crossing promo cards. These were included in the Japan-only magazine, Character Parfait, so you could only get these through that source. And finally, there's the Animal Crossing Cross Sanrio cards, which is a collaboration with Hello Kitty. There's six of these cards. So that brings us to a grand total of 509 Animal Crossing cards. I don't know if anyone actually has this full set, but if they do, I'd be shocked because there really isn't that much value to them, and they'd be really hard to track down too. As I exclaimed how stupid it would be to own all the Animal Crossing cards, here I am with all 90 Mario Sports Superstar cards. Look, it was a really good deal, okay? Don't judge me. And besides, I kind of like looking these over and seeing all the different renders. I can actually tell which ones are brand new and which ones aren't, since I've spent all my 20s making thumbnails with these Mario renders. Luigi Soccer uses the Mario 3D World render, Mario Golf uses the Mario Golf World Tour render, while Luigi Soccer is a Mario Party 4 render. Like, I could go on all day about this. The interesting ones to me, though, 
are, funny enough, Metal Mario and Paint Gold Peach. There aren't very many renders of these characters outside of a couple in Mario Kart, so it's kind of cool seeing them in these different poses. As for the game itself, you unlock the character's star version for their sport, and yeah, I don't care enough to scan all these in because this game is kind of boring as it is. I have a couple more complete sets of Amiibo cards, my most valuable being the Power Pro series. All six of these cards are absolutely obnoxious to get a full set of. They all come packed in with Power Pros randomly, a Japanese-only game, and each card is from a different retailer. So you have to go to multiple stores just to obtain all these. For this reason, that makes all the cards pretty spendy, but Heikawa in particular is ridiculous. There isn't much in terms of price charting history on Amiibo cards, but eBay is sitting at around $700 to $1,000 for this one card. I was lucky enough to get all six cards in this price range, which is an insane amount of money, let me tell you, but I thought it'd be worth it to have the cards for this video. I do also really like the artwork and the card quality. They feel very premium and have a nice glossy effect too. And finally, we have Yu-Gi-Oh! Amiibo cards. No, not normal Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, these are Amiibo specifically, and actually released this year. They're somewhat themed around a normal Yu-Gi-Oh! card, but they're of course much more basic and aren't meant for playing. They really don't do much in the game either, they just give you items and bonuses. Well, that sure led to some places. I'd like to do another Amiibo video in the future once all of the Amiibo are out, and go through every single Amiibo game to showcase exactly how all of them work. But that'll be for another time. For now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.